we'll begin the meeting now yeah now now i i think you can hear me yeah thank you welcome yeah. welcome thank you good evening ladies and gentlemen and um, welcome to the 151st monthly meeting of foswell foswell hyderabad is short for foswell india hyderabad yeah. and since we have some new people uh, foswell itself stands for friends on same wavelength we have meetings on the third saturday of every month at 6:15 pm on zoom now because of the pandemic since march last year we have been doing this and it is primarily a a forum for senior citizens however we have a lot of young people also who regularly attend our meetings and we are now on a mission to encourage more young people to attend so that they benefit from the knowledge and experience of the very eminent people who speak in our meetings as also the participants themselves and we celebrated the completion of 150 meetings last meeting last month when we had dr raja narayanan from lv prasad i institute gave us who gave us a brilliant talk on um, the future of healthcare in india and the policy initiatives that he is heading through a foundation that they have found uh, set up so let's go right ahead to uh we are all very eager to hear dr mashelkar so many of his uh, former colleagues from the labs have also joined us and before we do that let's start with a prayer i call upon harshita harshita is a young uh, student she just finished her 10th and enrolled in a first year intermediate and she is uh, she aims to be an engineer and she will render the prayer for this evening harshita yes good morning everyone and namaste everyone i'll now read a famous poem written by the celebrated poet and author rabindranath tagore it is called heaven of freedom he wrote this before our independence visualizing how our country will be after we gain independence heaven of freedom where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where the knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by the narrow domestic walls where the tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of death habit where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake thank you thank you archita for reading that so well wish you good luck in your you. pursuit of your engineering career thank you very much may i just noticed i'd like to welcome dr professor ram mohan rao garu he is a former dean of indian school of business and former director of indian institute of management at bangalore welcome ramon gauru thank you thank you very much it's a pleasure also welcome vargis matthews a brother from bangalore welcome vargis thank you brother suvarao my pleasure being here this evening thank you dr mullapudi harchandra prasad has been truly a man of many facets to say the least many of us from my alma mater the hyderabad public school have known him from the time we were in school he was the president of the society that runs the hyderabad public schools and you can identify him anywhere because of his very unique traditional attire and this evening is the ninth annual endowment lecture in his memory 
and it is fortunate that we have with us Mr. Uma Maheshwar Rao Polavarapu, who was associated with the Andhra Sugars Group for some time uh, as the head of IT before he went to Urbana Champagne to work there, and he has since returned to India. He will share some uh, anecdotes and brief uh, details of the life and work of Dr. Harsan Prasad. Uma Maheshwar Rao. Thanks, Subbarao Garu. Sabaya Namaha. President of Fossil Hyderabad, Sri Venkateshrao Garu. Family and friends of Dr. Mullapudi Harichand Prasad Garu. Fossilians, ladies and gentlemen. Before talking about the life and times of Dr. Mullapudi Harichand Prasad Garu, allow me to share a personal interaction I had with him when I joined Andhra Sugars as head of IT way back in September 1981. Dr. Prasad Garu, the chairman and managing director, after the traditional greeting of Namaste, said, we don't know much about information technology, computerization, etc. As IT head, you are our trusted advisor and you should guide us with appropriate IT initiatives that would improve overall productivity of the company and we will support them. His sincere and direct message stated with the disarming humility is what stayed with me and motivated me to perform my duties effectively. Now moving on to his profile, born on July 28, 1921 in Tanuku, Andhra Pradesh, Dr. Mullapudi Harishchandar Prasad Garu was a man of many parts, a patriot, a pioneer, a politician, an able administrator, and an industrialist with philanthropic outlook. Be it in politics or industry, his career was always steered by a strict adherence to ethics and values. After plunging into the freedom struggle in his student days, Dr. Prasad went on to forge a successful stint as a political leader, holding posts as such as Secretary of AP, Secretary of AP Congress Committee, MLC of Composite Madras State, and MLA of Andhra Pradesh. His immense good work as an elected leader is still remembered with awe and gratitude. In 1947, Dr. Mullapudi started a sugar factory, the Andhra Sugars Limited at Tanuku, which is a rural and predominantly agricultural area. He was the longest serving chairman and managing director of a public limited company of the country, which rightfully earned him the moniker of Andhra Birla. Today, that modest sugar factory has grown into a major industrial conglomerate in AP manufacturing sugar and a host of inorganic compounds and a wholly owned subsidiary of Josil manufacturing soap noodles and soaps. He also promoted the Andhra Petrochemicals Limited at Vijag in collaboration with UK-based Devi Meki for the manufacture of oxo alcohols and also set up Sri Akamamba Textiles Limited at Tanuku and a wind farm in Anantapur district. Driven by the passion of self-reliance espoused by Dr. Prasad, Andhra Sugars Limited developed propellant fuels for Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. He traveled the world to get the best equipment for all these industries. A deeply religious man with an altruistic outlook he set up Sri Mullapudi Venkataraidu Memorial Educational Trust to promote the cause of education and Sri Mullapudi Venkataraidu Memorial Medical Trust to set up a 450 bed hospital at Tanako. Dr. Mullapudi was also the principal donor for the establishment of Rangaraya Medical College at Kakinada. He set up several primary and secondary schools in the rural areas of West Godavari district and one of the oldest polytechnic colleges in the country in Tanuku. 
Dr. Prasad received numerous titles and awards, including an honorary doctorate from Nagarjuna University. He held several important positions in both public and private sector institutions, including being on the board of several government and trade bodies, cultural and educational trusts, and Rotary International. He also served as president of the Hyderabad Public School Society for many years. One of the early industrialists of South India, Dr. Harishchandra Prasad was known to be a stickler for punctuality, frugality, and discipline. Always dressed in the traditional immaculate Telugu attire, he was soft-spoken and was easy of approach both to his employees and all whom they, he met. With his passing in 2011 at the age of 91, the country may have lost one of its greats, but his rich and inspiring legacy lives on forever. Foswell celebrates his remarkable man's life by organizing an endowment lecture each year in the month he was born, that is in July. That concludes his brief profile. And I would like to thank Foswell for giving me this opportunity after almost 40 years of joining Andhra Sugars. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uma, Mr. Aru. I think the word uh, that Uma Mr. Aru used in introducing some aspects of Dr. Harichan Prasad's life, frugality. Frugality ties up very well with the subject for today. More with less for more. If you see the Andhra Sugars group, they are one of the oldest industry group in the state, in this part of the country actually. But they have always been away from any kind of ostentation. Almost minimalistic. If you see their plants and office and Murali, who is here, is a nephew of Dr. Harichandra Prasad. He is the managing director of Josil, as I mentioned earlier on. If you visit and step into the factory in Guntur, you will find that it matches in cleanliness, in tidiness, in the processes. Any nice good factory you would have seen anywhere in the world. That has been the culture that these people have imbibed as a group. And uh, I think uh, uh, Center for International Studies Murali is being built in uh, Nagarjuna University. Is it Center for International Studies? You are muted. You are muted. You are muted. You have to unmute yourself. International business, and I think it will open uh, in a few months. Okay. So it's being dedicated. Name uh, Dr. Him, Dr. Mullapodi Harishchandra Prasad, Institute of International Business, something like that. Very good. Thank yeah. you. I introduced earlier Professor Narasimha. Uh, Narasimha is just recently retired as a professor of biochemistry from Indian Institute of Science. Uh, we were classmates in school as with several others on this uh, screen today. And after retirement, he is now heading the new campus of Indian Institute of Science in Chitradurga district, uh, which one of the main vision or mission of which is to train high school teachers in science and maths. Natsima, would you tell us and introduce Dr. Mashelkar yes. this evening? Okay. All right, certainly. Thank you very much, Subhara, uh, for having me uh, here this uh, evening and to specifically, you know, especially uh, introduce Dr. Mashelkar. Dr. Mashelkar is one of India's most distinguished scientists and engineers. Now, before, you know, I was just going through his, uh, you know, uh, the lives and the achievements and things. That's and it about, runs you want to, almost. You want to switch on your camera? Oh, you want me to switch yeah. on? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. Sure. All right. Okay, sorry. Right. I could give an introduction to Professor Mashalka for 45 minutes, but I've been told to give only for three or four minutes. <laughs> many, many distinctions, lots of work done by Dr. Mashalkar, 
but I'll give you a very brief, but a very incomplete, because I think uh, Mashalkar has done so many things for this country that we need a whole session just to introduce him. Dr. Mashalka is a National Research Professor, has been the Director General of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the Chairman of the National Innovation Foundation, and also the President of the Indian National Science Academy. In recognition of his fantastic work, research contributions in polymer science and engineering, he has been honored by all the academies of this country, He's been honored as a fellow of the Royal Society England, the for foreign fellow of the US National Science Academy, as also the Engineering Academy. He's also the foreign associate of the American Academy of Arts and Science and fellow of the US National Academy of Inventors. 44 of 45 universities from around the world have honored him with honorary doctor, doctorates. But let me start off with Mashalka's early beginnings. Mashalka was born in 1943, born in a village in Goa and brought up in Maharashtra. He did or studied his engineering, the BE he did in the University of Bombay's University, the Department of Chemical Technology, also called as UDCT, but now called as the Institute of Chemical Technology in Mumbai where he obtained his B degree in chemical engineering. And in 1969, he got a PhD from that university. He also he currently serves as the chancellor of the same institute. Many things about his distinctions and awards, but I just very briefly tell you that he has been a visiting professor at the Harvard University, at the University of Delaware, and at the Technical University of Denmark, and also was a distinguished professor at the Monash University for over a decade, 13 years to be more specific. He has been on the board of directors of several companies such as Reliance Industries, Tata Motors, Hindustan Lever, Thermax, the Peramal Group, the KPIT Technologies, etc. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit more about his science because his research in the area of polymers is what he's known for. And Mashalkar and his co-workers researched on smart hydrogels, which are actually water-swollen cross-linked networks of polymers. They respond to stimuli such as the pH, the temperature, the electric field, and undergo volume phase transition. And very, very original work, very pioneering work, very fundamental work done by Mashalkar and his colleagues at the National Chemical Laboratory, for which he was the director, and then which is a part of the CSR, and later on became the director general of the CSR labs. I'll tell you a little more about that later. Now, these sensor, these uh, uh, hydrogels have enormous potential as sensors, soft robots, controlled drug delivery systems. And Mashalkar and co-workers discovered and demonstrated for the first time a class of smart hydrogel that exhibited unique biomimicking functions, thermoresponsive volume, phase transition similar to sea cucumbers, and uh, etc. I think it is because of this kind of work that he was recognized internationally and therefore the U.S. Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society of England, UK, recognized this fantastic work that he has done when he was in the National Chemical Laboratory. In 2005, the Indian government established a technical expert group on patent laws under the chairmanship of Mashalkar. And I think it is because of him as when he was the director general of CSIR, that the CSIR organization as such was actually recognized for the fantastic work that was being done in the laboratories. The whole process of CSIR transformation was heralded as one of the 10 most significant achievements of Indian science and technology in the 20th century. And the whole credit goes to Professor Ma Dr. Mashalka. Mashalka also at CSR successfully fought the battle of revocation of the U.S. patent on wound healing, healing properties of the turmeric, claiming that this was India's traditional knowledge and therefore not novel. Similarly, he also was responsible for the revocation of the U.S. patent on basmati rice, and Mashalkal is known for these two patents 
which brought back credit to India at the Indian science. Uh, he was a member of the Scientific Advisory Council to the Prime Minister for a number of years and also the Scientific Advisory Committee to the Cabinet set up by successive governments. He has chaired 12 high-powered committees to set, uh, set up to look into the diverse issues ranging from national auto fuel policy to overhauling the Indian drug regulatory system and dealing with the menace of spurious drugs. I think Dr. Mashalka was involved in a number of uh, uh, policy, national policies which affected our country and the economy. And the credit for bringing up uh, the economy to a large extent also goes to Dr. Mashalkar and his colleagues at the uh, CSIR. Now, particularly about his work, I thought I will mention because there's a huge list of uh, achievements and recognition that Mashalkar has received. But I think in the area, his research area is primarily in the area of transport phenomena, particularly in the thermodynamics of swelling, super swelling, and shrinking polymers. And all this work started at the National Chemical Laboratory in Pune, where he rose to become its director and eventually as the director general of CSR from 1995 to 2006. Now, for his contributions, numerous contributions, he has received several awards, but I think the civilian awards of this country, the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and Padma Vibhushan, India's second most uh, distinguished uh, uh, civilian award, has been conferred on Professor uh, Mashalkar. He is currently the National Research Professor and the Chairperson of the National Innovation Foundation. And I think, you know, all of us have especially the people who know him and the scientists that who have interacted with him. Um, Dr. Mashalka comes off as a very simple man. as a very nice to talk to, easy to talk to. And if you talk to him, as the people have written about him, he's dangerously optimistic in, in his views. He's uniquely multifaceted. And I think, you know, both industry and academia have actually benefited from interacting, from having Professor uh, Dr. Mashalka in, in its various boards and things like that. So I think we are looking forward to this uh, very, very exciting talk, uh, the Gandhian engineering, uh, more with less for more, which actually means achieving, ac or achieving access equi equi equality despite income equality. And I think this is a profound uh, 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 title for this talk, and I think his contributions really justify as what he has done for this country. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Dr. Mashalka deliver this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, Narsim, um, for doing such a good job of uh, trying to do justice in that short time for a very vast. Um, list of accomplishment of Dr. Mashelka, but I'd like to react to one particular thing you said from personal experience. Ananda, classmate, introduced Dr. Mashelka and said we should invite him to deliver this talk. And uh, we had a Zoom call, uh, just Dr. Mashelka, Anand and I, and I could feel that humility and simplicity come across the screen from personal experience. So. And he'll also narrate a, a personal anecdote which he brought up during my conversation because many of you would also relate to it. I had requested him to include it. So it's a very great pleasure for us, Dr. Mashelka, to have you with us. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share the screen. Sure. May I request the rest of you to try and... Uh, switch off your cameras now to conserve bandwidth while Dr. Mashelkar is presenting so that uh, we don't have interruptions. You can type in your questions in the chat at the end of his session. Yeah, are you able to see it? Yes, I can see it. We can see it. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, those very, very warm words, Professor uh, Nasiwa and uh, Dr. Subarao. Uh, may I first of all say 
that is a great honor, great uh, privilege uh, to be invited uh, by Oswal to uh, share with you some of uh, my ideas. Let me begin by paying my humble respects to the great iconic uh, figure of uh, Dr. Harichandra Prasad uh, uh, Garu. It's a real honor uh, to be speaking uh, this evening. Uh, I must also say that Hyderabad is my favorite city and it's a great pity that uh, due to this pandemic, uh, this is the best that we can do. Uh, I hope uh, uh, pandemic will be the thing of the past in the future and we'll be able to have our warm handshakes and hugs, uh, uh, you know, getting back to the old normal. I'm tired of this new normal that we have. Otherwise, I would have been in Hyderabad. Hyderabad, as I said, is my favorite city. I've visited a number of times. When I was director general of CSR for 40, uh, uh, sorry, 11 and a half years, uh, I remember coming to Hyderabad. We had CCMB, we had NGRI, we had RL Hyderabad, and uh, there are three of the finest laboratories uh, in, the, uh, in the CSR system of then 40 laboratories. And I have very vivid recollections. Uh, I must also say that I wouldn't be in CSR, uh, but for one individual. So I would like to remember him and uh, start my talk. And that is Dr. Naidu. I uh, remember my first encounter with him when he was the Director General of CSR. After finishing my PhD with uh, Professor Sharma, I uh, remember going to England uh, as first Liberium Research Fellow, uh, doing work in non neutron and fluid mechanics. And uh, I established a school there on geology. I was doing well. And one day I got a telex message. At that time, there used to be telex. Uh, I think our generation has heard about telex, but the younger generation would know what telex is. And uh, on that, th there was a message that you should go and see Dr. Nairuma in. Uh, uh, Savoy Hotel in London. And Dr. Tirak was then the director of National Chemical Laboratory. And he didn't say why I should see him. Uh, but you know, he has been my guru. He taught me in Udicity. He used to teach me organic chemical technology. And uh, the first principle is that you have to listen to your guru, you have to listen to your mother, you have to listen to your parents. That is how I have been brought up. So I said, oh, asking the question, I went. And then I remember the way it happened was that, uh, uh, you know, those were days when uh, scientists would come back and uh, the bureaucratic hurdles will get them frustrated and they will go back and so on. And I believe uh, he decided that uh, he will come and uh, just pick up the best and the brightest and invite them back. That's it. And I was barely... Uh, uh, you know, 32 at that time. And I remember the wonderful conversation with him. It was a great conversation. Yes. And he painted a wonderful picture of the future of India. And he said, that will come to only if people like you come back. And you will come back when you are very old. Okay. But if you come back now, uh, you know, and, and I was so charmed. And you know, the thing about me is that I don't think from here. I think from here. And I said, yes, I will come back. And in the evening, I called Vaishali, by the way. Uh, and of course, she has been a great supporter. If she, if she said, if the uh, nation calls you, uh, we must go back. And I, I remember coming back on a priestly salary of 2,100 rupees at that time, very tough times. Uh, uh, those were the days. And then, um, uh, you know, I was never interviewed, by the way. And I was wondering uh, how that happened. Later on, Dr. Tilak actually uh, showed to me a piece of paper on which after the, the conversation that I had, in a corner, he had just written, he's fantastic, grab him. And that was my appointment later. By Those were the days which, uh, where it was all based on trust, trust of a single individual. Today, you try to do that and you know what the consequences will be. All right. Same thing with Professor M.M. Sharma, my guru, you know, he became the first engineer scientist to become fellow of Royal Society. Vudban Narsiwa was the second, I was the third. 
okay and he came back and he was made a full professor at the age of 27 all right so those were very very different days and what dr dhaduma has done was for central weather research institute and uh, csr as a director general is absolutely uh, phenomenal so in a way i feel nostalgic when when i sort of uh, talk to sort of uh, uh, fossil uh, today's talk uh, is gandhi engineering more from less for more and i'll uh, uh, sort of introduce this topic to you uh, where did this term come about i remember it was uh, 28 april 2008 where i used the word gandhi engineering for the first time uh you see here robin betterham who was uh, the president of the uh, australian technology science and engineering academy and uh, i was invited to give a talk in canberra uh in their series on innovation and i said i must tell them something uh, which will uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, be very different from them because one can read all these books that you have and create a but i always like to uh, speak from the book of my life or my experience or of, you know doing something differently so i coined this term gandhi engineering and i told them uh, you must have heard about electrical engineering or not electrical engineering but not gandhi engineering what is gandhi engineering it is actually getting more from less for more and i explained how uh, the way i uh, sort of uh, explained was i said mahatma gandhi had said that earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need but not every man's greed that means what he was saying was that the current resources are going to be exhausted so try to get more and more from less and less use of resources so you can preserve them for your grandchildren great grandchildren and so on he had also said that i would prize every invention of science made for the benefit for all that means what you were saying was that do science for more and more and more people who will benefit from it so if we combine the two it become more from less for more that is how that was born so gandhi engineering became getting more performance from less resources for more and more people now see the contrast the contrast is making high technology work for the rich is very easy and when you do that what do you do you get more from more by spending more resource whether it is money or human capital or whatever etc so more from more is the norm making low technology work for the poor is very easy so that is less from less right what we are doing here is something completely different we are saying not more from more more from less because the moment you do more from more it is available only to a few people like a rose rice or whatever etc less and less people you have to make it for more and more people so this became more from less for more and later on uh, people started talking about it as mlm the seemingly impossible possible thing that i was talking about what describe income inequality ensure access equality that looks like a dream but look at this what is uh, the income inequality between them? Maybe thousand is to maybe ten thousand is to one, but they have access equal one is to one. Both of them are on mobile. So, despite income inequality, you can make access equality possible. And this more from less for more. India is an expert in this. High quality hepatitis B vaccine, Shanta Biotech did it. Okay, then later on Bharat Biotech did it. It was forty times cheaper, not forty percent cheaper. and it was high quality because unicef would have 40% of its supply if it's not high quality then not so this is getting more from less and more and more people high quality cataract eye surgery and i will say to you 100 times cheaper but high quality high quality open heart surgery 20 times cheaper naran rudalia but if you look at the quality it was as good as what uh, the new york hospitals uh, surgeons will have high quality artificial foot and i will show you a film at the end uh, which will demonstrate that now how do you do that this is all by doing innovation and what kind of innovation are we talking i will come to that and 
First, I want to say that you need a total innovation in order to do that. You require not just technological innovation, but business model innovation, system delivery innovation, workflow innovation, process innovation, organization innovation, policy innovation, and so on and so forth. In the classes we teach uh, our students only technology innovation. Rarely do we teach business model innovation. Of course, management uh, schools uh, 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 do that. But there are other ways of innovating. And it is the combination of these that actually can make a difference. I mean, for example, look at uh, India and the fastest and largest financial inclusion that we talk about. Okay. And uh, you will find, uh, for example, uh, this is a case of uh, total uh, innovation. Uh, we had uh, this mobile on one hand, the Aadhaar on the other hand, and uh, the Jandan Yojana on the other hand. And uh, we created the large scale technology enabled real time delivery of welfare services. And this was entirely possible because we combined uh, technological innovation with uh, uh, system delivery innovation, with workflow innovations, uh, policy innovation, and so on and so forth. And we were able to create this. And you can see during the pandemic time uh, what difference uh, these uh, uh, accounts for the poor have. Uh, so I think the central point I'm trying to make is that uh, it is not about uh, focusing on technological innovation, but combining all sorts of uh, uh, different kinds of innovation that uh, makes things happen. Now, in the case of uh, the cataract surgery, it was uh, not so much the technological innovation, but workflow innovation. How do you distribute the work? Okay. And therefore, the surgery was not $3,000, as in the US, but $30. And if you look at Irving Gaia Care, they would increase surgeon productivity, not the number of surgeons. They will have an assembly line technique of surgery, which increased the productivity by a factor of 10. That means different people who are skilled in different things will take up specific tasks, okay? So that the most expensive surgeon will not spend all his time in doing the most expensive uh, uh, sort of job. And this uh, was uh, inspiration from McDonald's, where delivery of same quality of products in diverse regions through highly trained staff. And the important part of it is that when you do more from less for more people, and benefit more and more people, that does not mean you make, uh, don't make profits. This is what is called as doing well, which is making profits, but doing good. That means good for the people, okay? And only 30% of the patients pay. I mean, that is the sort of business model. And they have done about 300,000 cataract surgeries per year. So, but you would say, how do you say that it is more from this for more? How do you say that it is a high quality? Oh my God. Uh, you are doing it for $30, uh, it must be lousy, there must be uh, 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 terrible. No, it is not. Just have a look. This is Royal College of Ophthalmologists, UK. This is Arvind. And if you look at the post-surgery, capsule rupture, they are two times better. If you look at iris trauma, Arvind is two times better. If you look at iris prolapse, Arvind is seven times better. And I can go on and on and on. And you can see in each of them, they beat the Royal College of Ophthalmologists. So this is what I mean by getting more from this. I went into the detail on this simply because I wanted to explain the concept. Now this MLM mantra that I talked about in 2008, it started spreading around the world. And the first breakthrough came when C.K. Prahlad, a great thought uh, leader, uh, actually, uh, uh, I, I used to meet him because we were on several boards and like Hindustan Liver and so on and so forth, etc. And he loved uh, what I had said in 2008 and my, these ideas and two of us interacted. And this uh, paper that we wrote, Innovation's Holy Grail, Getting More From Less For More, it finds now the place in the 10 must-read papers in uh, innovation. There's a special book that the Harvard Business Review has uh, brought in. Of all the papers, hundreds of papers that they've published, and the top 10, uh, this uh, yeah, paper is cited there. 
and there is a good reason in fact uh, uh, after this paper was published in harvard business review can you believe it within 6 months there was a world economic forum special session on more from this from more and then i was invited to talk in ted and uh, this has received large number of views uh, in 23 languages it is all sort of uh, available and so, so the message started uh, spreading and uh, uh, once i take up something you know i go after it i remember when you introduced me for my polymer research i know in one year i gave something like uh, 37 lectures on polymers so i used to be called polymer guy then when i started this patent literacy in india i would talk about nothing but patents and uh, i remember professor mohan ram who had a great sense of uh, humor uh, he introduced me in the indian national science academy meeting as not mashinkar but as patent guy so when i got on to this uh, mlm gandhi engineering as i told you i spoke first in canberra but later on this concept spread and i was invited to speak in washington uh, in world bank and of course uh, new york in the un uh, and so on so forth now in world bank basically in terms of development and growth they loved this particular idea of more from less for more you know inclusive innovation google innovation whatever sir and i remember they created a 55 million dollar project in vietnam on uh, you know using this particular concept for a transformational purpose there then uh, i remember uh, uh, going uh, uh, to manila which was asian development bank and also others and speaking there and i remember they are picking up this particular concept and actually creating programs around it. and then um, i remember speaking at uh, sort of uh, various places in and one of the most important was in brussels in european uh, union you know uh, european commission uh, the commissioner for research and innovation had invited me uh, to speak and i spoke about this and there were some 2000 plus uh, europeans and i explained to them about the competitiveness of doing more from less for more because as long as you are providing high quality basically at a low price the customers will come and i said we are going to compete with you on on the on the basis of uh, this and can you believe it in their horizon 2020 program they actually uh, sort of uh, introduced it later on in beijing now uh, as you know china is way 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 ahead of us but there is one area where they accepted our supremacy and i remember there was a world bank project on uh, looking at this and uh, they invited me as an uh, expert and you might say china is good at everything why would they want that well what is happening in china because you see what you see but you don't see uh, what they don't tell you and there is a great uh, sort of uh, divide in the rich and poor there and that is leading to social disharmony so about 10 years ago the world bank actually created a report for them on what would be the inclusive innovation strategy for them and those of you who are more interested in policy etc just put the world bank uh, china inclusive innovation and you will get uh, the uh, the report uh, that uh, uh, we had produced then uh, there were several other uh, uh, occasions for me to speak uh, tokyo a uh, uh, year before last uh, they were going to talk about the sustainable development goals and this they considered as a very very important uh, topic and i was invited to speak there i spoke in colombo cape town pretoria uh, medlin this was a talk uh, that was given to whitero uh, what is association Uh, of a technological research organization and so on i think the main point i want to make is that uh, the decade after i basically talked about you can see these 27 28 uh, countries and the way uh, the sort of thinking uh, got changed of course it doesn't appear as mlm by the way there are different uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, names that are given titles that are given but basically they mean uh, uh, the same uh i uh, then you will say all right you are spreading the word uh, 
across the world, what are you doing here? Well, one of the things uh, that we have done in CSR, of course, increase in innovation. You know, when you start producing generic drugs at the lowest prices with high quality, uh, they are um, uh, basically CSR's uh, creation. Uh, I'm very proud. You have RRL Hyderabad, which became Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. Okay. And if you see the difference that they made, antiretrovirals uh, were available for $10,000 per year's treatment. And, they created, and they created in uh, IRCT something which Cipla later on produced for $300, $10,000 to $300. And the net effect of that was millions of people were saved, as a matter of fact. Hamid always tells you. So more from less for more became, of course, um, the, the conduct of uh, uh, CSR. But I believe doing something on your own also. So I created uh, this award in my mother's name, and I'll explain to you why I did that. And uh, I created a Mashelka Foundation. And this is the innovation in the more from less for more way, where you have affordability, accessibility, and uh, adaptability. The uh, basic uh, uh, tenet there is that I don't give the award or we don't give the award to um, the best practice. Like I said here, we give the award to next practice. When you follow best practice, like we say DuPont is the best safety standard, we follow them, we are followers. It is time that India thinks of leading and that means creating next practice. So, for example, I remember you can see Narayan Murthy here. He was uh, uh, the chief guest, and uh, uh, we had uh, uh, Sham Vasudeva once again from Hyderabad uh, creating this uh, three netra. And uh, this was a portable, non invasive, non mediatric, low cost device for detecting five eye diseases. And that was because 90% of eye care equipment were not affordable for hospitals in India, they were imported not portable and need a lot of power and expertise. So we made them six times cheaper, could be operated by mini military operator. And there are 4,000 plus devices that are operational in 25 countries now. And he has screened 5 million people. Okay. So six times cheaper implies more from less. And 5 million people means more, more from less for more. The other award, Mishkin Ingawale for Touch HB, for example, and you can see uh, Mrs. Anuaga here. You will not see any politician, by the way, as a chief guest. Always had these people. And uh, uh, you can see what he did. He created a rupees 10 non invasive hemoglobin test. Not the best practice, but the next practice. Best practice is invasive with needles. You take blood. He said, no, non invasive, no needles. The cost was 150 rupees. He said, I will do it in 10 minutes. And this you can see, you can do in two minutes. And the first version that he created, as you can see here, and what he did, and this is a very important point I want to emphasize. He used high technology, photoprismography, spectrophotometry, advanced software, for photon scattering, and so on and so forth to create this particular test. So it is actually making high technology work for the poor. I want to clarify here. I don't like the word jugad, by the way. Jugad is doing less from less, somehow. No consideration for safety, no consideration. Cost is the only consideration. India, when it is called as a Jugadu nation, I don't like it at all, by the way. I must make it very clear. And MLM is a very different concept. It's not doing less for less, making more from less. And that making more from less is actually using high technology. The Touch HB 2.0, of course, is even better. It captures the picture of conjunctivia and uses the method of reflectance photometry to estimate uh, the HB content in blood. Look at another uh, award, Rahul Rastogi, for Sanket, the ECG device that he created. Uh, here, uh, by the way, this is uh, uh, my wife, Vaishali Mashenka, and this is Professor Anil Gupta, uh, who I consider as a guru in inclusive innovation. And this is the young Rahul Rastogi. This is uh, uh, chairman of the uh, International Longevity Center of uh, India, which works uh, for the old people. And what he did was a portable ECG device. And Sanket 1.0 looked like uh, this. 
and uh, the personal 12 lead ecg event monitor portable 2500 is the cost of the device and he has already sold 0.2 million devices in eight countries and now he has come out uh, with uh, even a better version it is sanket life 2.0 so this is capable of taking 12 lead medical grade uh, ECG fully certified. Now, this one, for example, best practice to best practice. This is the best practice, isn't it? You go, you lie down, there are 12 leads that are put up, there's a nurse who take the readings and so on and so forth. No. From there, he has created a portable device, you know, uh, which you just put your two thumbs for 15 seconds, and then there is a sensor which you put uh, three times up, three times down the heart. And within three minutes, if you have downloaded an app called uh, Sanket, uh, your uh, uh, sort of uh, on mobile, you will uh, get uh, uh, the ECG. What it means is that just think from it, from the inclusion point of view. We are talking about health for all, that is all right. But in a village, if an old woman uh, starts having heart pain and she has to, uh, uh, I mean, she has to uh, go for an ECG. They will put her in a uh, bullet cart or a jeep or a motorcycle, as the case may be, and drive uh, several kilometers. You don't have to. You can do it right there, provided, of course, there is a connectivity. Uh, that's a different matter altogether. The other award, for example, I'm giving you um, uh, how. That affordable excellence, because normally we say what is affordable is not excellent, excellent is not affordable. How affordable excellence comes in? This is Mirsha. What did he do? He created a $1 based cancer screening uh, device, uh, which is a low cost uh, tactile sensor that measures tissue stiffness difference in real time, non invisible, and without pain, you know. And uh, uh, you can see it's ultra portable, accurate, minimal training, wireless, and cloud connected. And instant results that you get. They will say, fine, this must be a laboratory demonstration. So, so what? No, sorry. This is benefiting the world now because UE Life Sciences and G Healthcare, they announced a pivotal global partnership and they're taking it to sort of 25 countries and large number of uh, people. Uh, people like Kiran Mazumdar have uh, 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 sort of uh, backed uh, uh, Mir Shah. And that's why I always say talent, technology, and trust. We are all the talent in India. We have technology, but we must trust these young people. The other award, Dr. Vinay Kumar Anupath, for example, uh, it uh, has a point of care biosensing. Diabetes management, kidney uh, failure, anemia, malnutrition, it deals with eight test results within 60 seconds, no special storage requirement, ultra low cost, etc. And that is spreading uh, all across now. We have Tata Trust have come uh, to see, as you can see, it is sort of moving in different uh, uh, states now. Now, uh, the 2019 award was a very special one because we are celebrating 150 years of uh, Mahatma. And this award went to uh, Rashid. Uh, you know, in fact, uh, uh, he's coming and seeing me tomorrow in uh, uh, Pune, by the way. This is Dr. Vijay Kerkar. And uh, these are the other two. And they're all college kids, by the way. And this is called Gen Robotics. What did it do? If you remember what Gandhiji had said, Sanitation is more important than political freedom. And Supreme Court had banned the government by saying sewers are gas chambers where manual scavengers are sent to die. And that is a fact. If you see manholes, the 4.5 million people engaged in manual scavenging. These are the data 22,327 men die in India during uh, uh, various kinds of sanitation and 98% are diagnosed with fatal disease, okay? One manual scavenging death every five days. This is not all. So these young kids say, man in the hole is wrong. It has to be machine in the hole, okay? And therefore, it was not best practice to next practice. Man in the hole is not best practice. Man in the hole is worst practice. So they moved from worst practice to the next practice. And what was that? That they created a simple user interface 
uh, based uh, sort of uh, robot. And this, I would say, uh, I said, uh, despite income inequality, access equality, but this is access to dignity through technology. Why do I say that? Because uh, what they did was very interesting. The moment uh, these uh, manual scavengers, their jobs are taken away by machines, then what happens? They lose the job. Okay, so what do, what do they do? All their life they have been trained in this room. So what they did was that, like uh, uh, Rashid is showing here, they were trained on the, as a robot operators. So can you just imagine the manual scavenger becomes a robot operator? Now just imagine the dignity. Just imagine their daughter or son in the school. What does your father do? Manual scavenger, putting the head down. No, now they put up their head and say, he's a robot operator. That is the social transformation by doing Gandhi engineering. And I'm very happy to see that there were a series of events, by the way, after uh, Anjali Mashalkar Inclusive Innovation Award got a lot of uh, uh, publicity. And then there was a Rajya Sabha MP who was on this committee, by the way, of uh, Manuel Scavenger's uh, uh, rehabilitation. And when he saw that, he was stuck. Then we showed to him what he, it was, and he took it to the actual committee, etc. There was a discussion, and I must uh, give credit uh, uh, to Hardik Singh uh, Puriji, etc. He pushed it forward, and then there's a bill that came up on rehabilitation, which now says the bill proposes to completely mechanize sort of a, a sewer thing. What is the point I'm trying to make? Once again, it is this kind of Gandhi. Yeah. You know, I always tell young people, innovation, Compassion, passion, innovation in your brain, in your mind, but passion in your belly, but compassion in the heart. These kids had that, as a matter of fact. And look at the impact that it has at a policy. Let me uh, come to the last Anjani Marshall Film Cuisine Innovation Award. Uh, this is the report in January 2021, by I'll read it out for you. The situation here is dire. Every minute, 10 people test positive for COVID-19. Every eight minutes, someone dies. Ambulance circle for hours, unable to uh, find ERs that can accept patients. Hospitals are running out of oxygen. ICU capacity is at zero. This is Los Angeles. This is not India. This is Los Angeles in January. And what happened in, uh, in uh, India in April? Delhi hospital fast running out of ICU beds. Okay. Now, the challenge is that once you have a situation like this, what do you do? Okay. And that's why last year, what I did was that because COVID had come, I did not have one award. I had two awards. And one was uh, young people who had dealt with uh, the COVID issue. And this award went to uh, this uh, 2020, went to what is called as Dozi. What does Dozi do? It can convert any bed into step down ICU rapid within a few minutes. Okay. And what is it? It's actually a continuous contact free wireless monitor with remote monitoring capabilities. It's like IoT with sensors and so on. 10 times cheaper than the products used in ICU. No maintenance is required no consumables, prior technical expertise. So what you do is that you slip the device um, under the mattress and of course uh, connect it for uh, sort of oxygen, connect it to the internet, monitor uh, sort of remotely. And you can do both ward monitoring as well as care at home. Care at home for high risk patients, elders, home isolation of COVID patients or ward monitoring in hospitals. What it does is to measure seven of your parameters which are critical with 98.4% accuracy, with 98.4% accuracy. And as a result of that, what has happened in the second wave, as you can see, as we speak, it is all over now. Actually, there are 4,000 beds uh, that have been converted, 10,000 uh, patients have been monitored. And most importantly, the nursing hours are spread. Because as the pandemic was uh, growing and hitting, we were running out of not just hospital beds, but nurses and doctors. 
Now here in this particular case, one nurse can uh, monitor something like 100 patients, all right? And not uh, sort of five or six. So you can see the kind of difference this can make. Now, this is the good news. I'll tell you also the bad news now. The bad news that, uh, and by the way, you might ask how much does this device cost? It costs only 20,000 fees, by the way. And uh, there are models that way. The challenge is that we create technology and then India comes in your way. What is that? When this device was taken to hospitals, public hospitals, they didn't have budget to buy this. And secondly, if they wanted to buy, there had to be tendering process. And of course, he's the only one who is supplying this. So then we had to find an alternative and the alternative was to go for corporate social responsibility. Okay, where they will donate beds. Can you just imagine today, large number of beds are being donated by of course, high net worth individuals or people who have their heart in mind, but a lot of foreigners, foreign companies are coming and uh, the sort of uh, supporting that. My friend was the chief scientist of Australia. Uh, you know, that is like a principal scientific advisor, uh, Alan Finker. When he heard about this, you know, he gave $10,000 and gave Bates and so on and so forth. So here is an interesting case where you have the possibility of remote monitoring, reducing the load, et cetera, et cetera. And rules are coming in the way to sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, you know, take it forward. Anyway, now, I would say that we have done 10 years of uh, 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 journey of uh, uh, this uh, award. And uh, we are now writing uh, sort of a small book on what have we learned? Because you saw all the faces. These are all young people. And all young people not wanting to be Bill Gates of this world or uh, uh, anybody of this world, but they are trying to solve local problems, social problems, their heart is in the right place. So what did we learn from them? We are bringing out a book on this. And what we have found is that the most important thing is empathy. For going for more from less for more, you have to have empathy. Secondly, they do innovation across product, process, business model. They co-create it with consumers. And most importantly, initially, nobody wants to fund them, by the way. And they require some funding. Our venture capital companies have become vulture capital companies. We start looking at profits right in the beginning. Okay. Private equity. So where is that soft funding coming from? And you require patience. Then partnerships cause scale, like you saw uh, uh, in the uh, case of iBest. Uh, public policy support is very critical, and I will come back to that later. And as I said, talent, technology, and trust, somebody must trust these young people. Purpose, perseverance, passion, many of them, they have big purpose at hand. This is what I want to do. Okay, the North Star, Dhruvatara, like what we say. And they have perseverance because they know that uh, winner is never a quitter and quitter is never a winner. All right. And they do it with passion. And finally, they believe in doing well by doing good. Each one of them, by the way, winners, they are profitable. And yet, they are solving the challenges of the poorest of the poor. And there is this assured success, assured innovation. There are certain criteria that they meet. For example, empathy driven by personal experience. You know, uh, this guy was uh, living in a, a remote village with chronic condition of juvenile diabetes himself, and uh, he created that Anupath that you saw. Here, yeah, these uh, people, they saw in Kerala, manual scavenger actually die, and that touched their heart. If you look at uh, Mir Shah, for example, his mother-in-law was diagnosed with, late with breast cancer because uh, she didn't want to go through a surgical process uh, because uh, she thought it was a, a painful process and it was diagnosed late and she said, I must uh, do something about it. You look at uh, Rahul Dastogi, he used to take his father several kilometers in a hospital uh, at middle of the night. He said, no, I must do something. And here uh, is another one who got this award for the quickest blood uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, this thing. Uh, a clotting device uh, that he uh, sort of created. When he saw somebody who was knocked down in a car and he was taken to the hospital on the way, he died. So somewhere your heart has to be touched by it. Finally, you have to think from your heart. 
co-creating with consumers, for example, the patient convenience with no probe or uh, I, I, I look at him. Uh, for example, it is very interesting. When Sham actually went to uh, the, uh, the juggies and uh, so on, you know, uh, slums, and when he offered this, uh, people will not come. You know why? You all have experienced it. You put that drop uh, in the eye and then you have dilation. And then for the next uh, two, three hours, you can't do anything. Everything looks fuzzy. And for poor, if they do that, what does it mean? They lose the day job. I mean, you know, whatever they leave from hand to mouth. So he said, no, I will create an alternative system. And that's how he actually uh, created. Then soft funding and patience, for example. These guys were helped by Anand Mahindra, this Kiran Mazumdar. Uh, I myself in CSR had created a program called Recruitership Program, by the way, where money was given to young people or anybody, uh, uh, innovator, uh, from 10 to 15 lakhs with no bank guarantees. And it was just a grant, by the way. And uh, uh, he, uh, Mishkin Ingawa, they got that. And the Startup Trust, for example, it's a very interesting story, by the way. Uh, what happened was that when uh, he developed this Rahul Rastogi and we gave him the award, it was only six leave. I said, oh, six leave nahi chalega. You have to have 12 leave. So he said, I don't have, I've burnt out all my money. I said, how much do you require? He said, 46 lakh. I said, show me. Because in my case, it is always very fine trust. And he actually wrote down everything and showed it to me. I was convinced. And Tata Trust, for some reason, had invited me to talk about some future and all that. And I took this device that he had and showed it to them. I said, this is six lead, but if you give 46 like it can be 12 lead, and it can do this, 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 and the other. You cannot believe it. Within 48 hours, they wrote that check for 46. He could not have gone to a commercial bank. He could not have gone to a venture capital company. And such soft funding was available. So I think that is the important uh, sort of point. The last part of my speech is about how do you make these things happen very fast? So my book, uh, Leapfrogging to Pole Vaulting, uh, it came from a very interesting uh, discussion that I had with uh, uh, Mukesh Ambani. I've been on their board and chairman of the Reliance Innovation Council for from 2007. And one day he was uh, telling me that we would talk with us leapfrog. I said, why does a frog leap? Because he's afraid of his predators, he jumps a few feet. We must pole wall. The size of the pole determines our sort of aspirations. And how do you create such thinking, basically, was uh, the basic uh, uh, challenge. So this book is about that. And I'm very happy that 2019, it got the best business book of the year award. And there, actually, somebody asked me, I said, Baba, you are pole vaulting, but how do you make sure that you don't break your back? And that is where chapter three, you will find this assured innovation framework has been created, where any innovation that you do must have these characteristics, affordable, scalable, sustainable, universal, rapid, excellence in terms of technology and distinctive. All right? There has to be certain originality. And this framework has become very popular now. And as you can see, if you look at iBraced, uh, it was, uh, of course, uh, 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 affordable because it's just one dollar. It was scalable, as you saw. It is sustainable, universal user friend. It's so easy. It does diagnosis uh, very rapidly. It uses high technology, and it is very sort of distinctive. Okay. Now, such kind of things now are going to be more and more important because of the pandemic. My lecture is becoming more important post-pandemic than it was even before. Why? Because more and more people are being driven to poverty. As you can see, the poverty was reducing. 2018, that year, it went down by 1.2%. 2019, it went down by 1.5%. But 2020, it increased by 7.1%. So you can see this curve. This is how it was going. And these are the projections that came. And therefore, COVID-19 uh, could push 100 million people into extreme poverty was what World Bank said in 2020. And you have seen ourselves, the plight of the migrant laborers, what has happened to them, the number of people who have lost their job, how many of them have moved from poverty to extreme poverty. 
So what is their future? Future of families like this? We have to worry very, very deeply about. And then how are they going to build the future? How are they going to build the future? Because uh, uh, this uh, lady, for example, who lives under these conditions, she's very poor, but she understands the importance of education. That's why she's dressing her well up uh, uh, in, um, in, in uni uniform. She understands. Now, there was a very interesting discussion, by the way, that I had. Uh, this was among scientists, and uh, we were talking about what are the most powerful equations. And uh, one um, fellow said, uh, well, it is uh, uh, Newton's law, force equal to mass into acceleration. Other one said, no, 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 no. It is E equal to MC square, Newton of Einstein. Then they came to me. I said, nor Newton, uh, neither Newton nor uh, Einstein. The most important equation is this. A equal to F. Education is equal to future. If you have no education, there is no future. And if this girl does not have education, she will have no future. And such girls are plenty now. And as you must have seen, after the pandemic, child labor has come back in some parts. Uh, early marriages have actually come back. So education, education, education is a must. So this is my equation, E equal to F. They will say, if you are a scientist, you will have to prove it. So I will prove it. Just look at this. This is the proof. This is uh, uh, 17 uh, uh, March uh, 2000 in Rastrapati Bhavan. Now, you can see here, uh, 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 both Ratan Tata and I are getting uh, Padma Bhushan from K.R. Naranan. And what is the story behind this? If you look at K.R. Naranan, he was born in a very poor family. He used to walk kilometers. They were so poor that he could not, uh, his parents could not afford uh, tuition fee. So what they would do, he would stand outside the class and take notes. Later on, he got a chance because he got a Tata scholarship. And the rest is history. He rose to be the president. My story, my childhood was not dissimilar. I was born in a very poor family. My father died when I was six. I was born in a village called Masha. She was illiterate. She brought me to Mumbai. She did manual work to bring me up. Two meals a day was a challenge. I studied under street lights. I walked barefoot until 12. At SSC, secondary school exam, 11th standard at that time, I was 11th among 135,000 students. And yet I was going to leave education. And then came Tata. And they gave me 60 rupees per month. I'm speaking to you today because I got the 60 rupees per month. But who gave it? It was Tata Pen, Tata Trust. Now you can just imagine that one Tata scholar is giving Padma Bhushan to another Tata scholar. And the Tata scholar is giving Padma Bhushan to someone because of whom he is what he is doing. If this does not prove the equation he could have nothing with. Now, at that time, of course, uh, if somebody gave me 60 rupees, that was fine. But today, I can't have that. Because we are still doing online learning. 1.6 billion children were thrown out of school in 100 days. But one third of them do not have access. They have what is called digital deprivation. And if you see last June, I think we should put our, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a shame. In Assam, no smartphone, 15 year old student commits suicide after failing to attend online classes. And if you see, you have these students committing suicide for not being able to attend online classes. Punjab, Assam, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Kerala, Karnataka, and so on. Now you would say, my God, then uh, why don't we have technologies by which uh, uh, you know we can uh, support these kids? Is India not capable of that? Of course we are capable of that. Look at this, 2001, I'm talking about 20 years ago. Computer was created 
the most significant innovation in computer technology in 2001. I mean, this is Bruce Sterling, huh? New York Times. The most significant innovation in computer technology in 2001 was not Apple's gleaming titanium PowerBook G4 or Microsoft Windows XP. It was a computer, a netly, radically simple, portable computer intended to bring the computer revolution in the third world. Where is it? It's not there anyway. Akash, $35 tablet, 23rd July 2010, it was announced. Where is it? It's not there. And I remember when I was DG of CSI, I had created this new millennium Indian technology leadership initiative. And there I said, $2,000 laptop, can you do it in $200? Vinay Deshpande did it, by the way, from Bangalore. Okay, what happened to it? It's not there. So we had created all this, and this not happened. So there is something wrong about our ecosystem. And what is that? Then you have to realize that to take a benefit to the society from a technology, there has to be a backup of a policy. And what is that policy? That has to be bold and innovative public procurement policy for innovation and of innovation. Like, for example, uh, let's take the simpler case. If we had the proper policy, what would have um, happened? And I have, by the way, described this particular policy. I was invited by Niti Aayog to write about what could be that public procurement policy. So what happens is uh, that uh, this is supported by the government by uh, the, the, through the public procurement uh, by placing an order maybe for 10,000. And by that time, what happens? You create a prototype, you uh, seek the market, you have uh, a sort of feedback, you improve your product, uh, et cetera, et cetera. These are the kinds of policies that are followed uh, sort of all around. And we need uh, um, actually such policies. And I'm very happy that this is happening. For example, Maharashtra State Innovation Society, of which I'm the co-chairman, we created a startup policy where we are looking at startups and giving them a chance, not the normal tendering process, because then they have no chance. I always give this analogy with Sachin Tendulkar. You know, he scored a century uh, when he was 15 years old in Ranji Trophy. But the rules would say that unless you have 10 years of experience, you can't get into test. It is something like that for a, for, for a startup. How do we have it? The word startup itself means that we doesn't have a sort of experience. So we have created alternative tendon systems now, basically, uh, by giving them sort of uh, uh, work. I must uh, end by talking about, uh, this is all fine, but in order to make it big, our big business houses, their hearts must move into the right place. And their practices must change. Our paper with C.K. Prahlad, by the way, uh, actually shows that. Basically, because this is a Harvard Business Review, by the way. So it talks about business, how you can make business out of this from MLA. So the change has to be from technologically sophisticated, performance rich products with many features to frugal, functional, but high quality. High quality. Remove features to reduce cost. Normally, what we do, oh, this poor fellow, what can he afford? No. We have to reinvent the product from ground up, by the way. Premium price, high margins is what we want. No. Can we do affordable price, high volumes? And I will come to that. Technology push, product out approach, no. Customer centric, market this. Current markets, old money, because we are looking at the same pie and trying to cut each other, basically. No. You enhance the pie. Okay. Large numbers will come. And then there will be new markets and new money. And finally, use development products to transform emerging markets, no. You have to build new global growth platforms based on emerging markets. You can see, for example, this is a classic example of uh, assure more from this for more. We are doing well by doing good. And this is Joe. Is it affordable? Yes. Four rupees per GB is the cheapest in the world. Or voice free is the cheapest in the world. Is it scalable? Yes. 450 million uh, customers. Is it sustainable? Yes. Uh, 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 it's making money. Is it user-friendly, universal? Yes, both of them are using it. Is it rapid? Yes. Actually, uh, uh, they were nowhere about three years ago and where they have moved. Is it excellent? Yes. 4G LTE technology, not 2G, not 3G. Is it distinctive? Yes, there are many business models that they have used for technology, etc. So it is possible to do well 
doing well by doing good. And let me explain that. Normally, you first you are doing well, and then you are doing good. It is an and there. Doing well and doing good. What does it mean? Like for example, Bill Gates makes a lot of money, and then he says, "Hey, what do I do? I forgot the poor." And then he creates a foundation. Not bad. He has done an outstanding job. But it is and. Yeah, it's a case of doing well by doing good because when you are doing this, you are doing good, giving them the access and changing their lives. But at the same time, you are profiting, basically. And you can see this is where the astro matrix actually basically fits in. Let me end my lecture by talking about a specific case. Uh, this is the most powerful example of M and M that I can give you. Uh, this is a twelve thousand dollar put. Okay. Uh, one feels sorry for that man, but he is rich enough to get this food. Can we afford it? No, we can't. So what do we do? Jaipur food, twenty-eight dollar, and Time made it a headline by saying the global scourge of landmines left thousand limbless, and then two gifted Indians developed twenty-eight dollar food. Now I want to show you there is a deep meaning in the last film, which summarizes the entire message of my one hour lecture. And that is like this. You look at this uh, Jaipur put. Okay, he climbs. Just see the flexural strength. Just see how it bends and so on. And now look at what he does. He jumps. Okay, it is strong enough to bear that weight, that bear that stress. And then. Uh, Just see what he's going to do now. He wears it, put very usable, and then he runs. And when he runs, he can run a kilometer in four minutes thirty seconds. Now, normally, if I was in Hyderabad and I was doing this physical lecture, I would have turned to all fifty-six of you and asked how many of you. Can do one kilometer in four minutes thirty seconds, and then, uh, as uh, Dr. Subara mentioned, uh, we have to reduce our age. Then I would have asked you, when you are young, could you do one kilometer four minutes thirty seconds? Normally, if I have a five hundred uh, audience, by the way, after I give this lecture, when I ask, where do five hands go up, plus minus? What does it mean? That means what he is doing. Is that those one person can do what he is doing, but ninety nine person can't do what he is doing. So what we have done is that if we, he, he did not have a foot, he would have been crawling. But because we are giving him this foot, he beats ninety nine percent of. Them. He beats ninety nine percent of. Them. That's the meaning of inclusive innovation. It's not getting access, despite income inequality. It is getting access to dignity because. Jaipur food uh, wearing people have got married. They have got uh, uh, they are working and they have got, have got uh, social pushing uh, back and so on so forth so forth. And that is why this more from less for more, the Gandhian engineering is the way for not only India to go but for the rest of the world to go because inequalities have not risen just in India but around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Marshelkar. I think you can uh, probably stop sharing your screen. Yeah. Would you like to stop sharing your screen? Yeah. 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 I think I speak for everybody. when i say we need a few moments to come out of that you know almost a trance we are in just listening to you you know you mesmerized us with uh, every single uh, aspect of your thought more than the word uh, it's amazing it's really amazing how you're carrying forward the legacy 
like you said in those days professor naidama vikram sarabhai you now i think india is fortunate to have sons like you you know for the good of the country delighted that we could spend this evening with you uh, there are a lot of appreciative messages and uh, i will take the questions if you are okay with that now and yes. uh, uh, the questions uh, participants can please key them in into your chat box and those of you who are new would like to get um, future invites i've given the email there in the chat box please send your name mobile number and email into the uh, to that email address that i gave you uh, the first question dr mashelkar is it a myth that over decades and maybe more than a century innovations which epitomize mlm have been deliberately killed by the nexus between industry and policy makers and to illustrate a incandescent bulb which will last 5000 hours was made long back but the then industry never allowed it to come out is that a myth or is it still happening in the country in the world and is that one of the reasons why more for less for more is not a reality i think that's an excellent question uh, because uh, that itself is a separate one hour lecture by the way <laughs> that i can give yeah. but let me just uh, sort of summarize i think the first thing is that you can never hold a good technology uh which uh, actually delivers quality back all right and uh, the customer finally actually decides that's uh, always the case for example general electric you know they also created a, a ecg machine uh, which was affordable excellence uh, kind that we uh, sort of talked about and finally that uh, actually all over the world that is being sold now basically so as long as in the affordable excellence that excellence part of it is there our customers normally come in their challenge is that talent technology and trust the trust part of it let me give you an example navin khanna was one of the uh, awardees mm. among the 12 awardees navin khanna oh. created a uh, dengue detection uh, kit okay normally i hope none of you have had dengue but those who have had would know that it takes one or two days before you get the results he created something which could detect dengue within uh, just 15 minutes not only that the markers that he had created were such actually that uh, you could detect also the stage at which dengue was it was fully certified it had us patents everyone knew it but india has not used it ana you know why banavarpanga there were imported uh, so, uh, 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 kits from uh, south korea from australia and from us then what happened was a pandemic kit. and in that pandemic the kits were rapidly being uh, sort of used and india was going to run short so we approached all the three countries okay us said no we require more time australia said no we require more time south korea said yes we can supply and what happened as luck would have it is that they put those kits in a wrong ship which went to africa so we had no kit and we had no other uh, option uh, but to go for navin khanna's kit okay by default net result of that is that he had 0% market share when this happened today he has 78% market share but just imagine that we are supposing uh, that a ship had come here we would be still using the imported kits that's why i say talent technology and trust that trust is sort of most important within the society in fact i am reminded of uh, uh, i have a special lecture on this by the way and there is a cartoon where uh, rk lakshman uh, he shows an eye doctor who is examining the eye of a, uh, of, of a patient and he says uh, i want to ask you a question uh, there is a particle in your eye uh, should i take it out i am asking you that because this is a foreign particle 
that is the tragedy i think that uh, is is the greatest sort of thing and of course the question that you asked is absolutely right because uh, uh, competition will always like to ensure uh, and and uh, i know from my long experience there have been cases of that kind but finally an intelligent consumer intelligent customer like if you have a technology the farmer will always use it as long as it is uh, uh, great and brings him sort of benefit yeah it is that i think but what you require for that is a knowledge society you know where everybody understands uh, sort of uh, uh, the full uh, um, sort of uh, technology value and uh, the benefits and so on thank you uh, the next question is somewhat uh, related india is uh, aiming to be the startup capital of the world and uh, in fact in the city where we most many of us are hyderabad is also trying its best to find its place under the sun in that startup uh, culture while that is happening india also is innovating in the financial markets and a lot of venture capitalists whom you rightly called vulture capitalists have also come in now when indian markets are opened up and the venture capitalists come in their objectives are actually at cross purposes isn't it so how does this ecosystem ever stabilize so that innovation gets that important funding or the initial angel funding which is so essential for innovation to be commercialized or come into mainstream is there any policy prescription that you had thought of yeah um actually uh, in uh, uh, you know when i was the dg of csr in 1990 uh, during 1995 to 96 one things uh, we did in year 2000 was the following uh, we created what is called as a new millennium indian technology leadership initiative and the story behind it is uh, very interesting by the way and mr yashwant sinha was the finance minister and uh, i remember he called me on 18 february because 28 february he was going to uh, deliver the <laughs> deliver the uh, sort of uh, budget speech and he said uh, mashankar this is uh, beginning of a new millennium Let's do something exciting uh, give me something which is exciting and i remember asking him sir how much time do you have i do i have 30 minutes i remember calling somebody and dictating new millennium indian technology leadership initiative and i wrote leadership in capital letters mm -hmm. i said we should not be followers we should be leaders and for being uh, for leading you have to take risks okay and indian industry is not ready to take uh, risk considering several, several things government should take risk and it would be trust based basically so the original idea that i proposed there was actually uh, bringing talent technology <laughs> Well, it will be a public-private partnership of a unique kind. We will look up at the challenge that India has, and put a grand challenge where we get the best of minds in industry, best of minds in uh, in uh, uh, public institutions together. The private sector will give uh, get money at zero percent interest. By the way, I put zero percent interest. Uh, later on, uh, it got to three percent, which was low considering the high interest rate at that time, two thousand. by the way and the money to be returned only if they are successful okay this was not venture capital it was adventure capital government doing that and the public institutions will get uh, get a uh, uh, grant so it was a soft form and a grant combination and the results were remarkable like i gave you the example of uh, mobilis Uh, which uh, uh, was brought out when I gave the challenge of two thousand dollar to two hundred dollar. Unfortunately, the rest of the backup was <laughs> not there, and it ended up high net worth individual buying it for a few few crore and creating something, but uh, it did not make an impact. There were others, for example, but they took this <laughs> challenge technology and trust. Just to give you one example, uh, and, and this was launched in Hyderabad itself. By by the way, by uh dr apj abdul kalam was then the president this was bioinformatics i remember going to tata and saying that uh, suit which is the best bioinformatics software cost half a million dollars can you do it i'm a 10x guy by the way 10 times better 10 times cheaper 
I talked mm-hmm. to Doctor Vidya Sagar, and uh, he said yeah, he was also crazy like me. He said he will do it. Why did I go to him? Because he knew how to make a product. My labs did not, do. and we put nineteen laboratories together. CCMB was one of them. By the we created what is called as BioSuit. You know, mm. and within eighteen months and five million dollars, there was something that was superior to the best in the world, and it was launched. By the way, in 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 California. Now here, yeah, and then of course, Tata's went ahead and did not sell it as a software. They created a platform, a separate company. It was a big sort of success story. Okay, but here the basic issue is that of the trust. I did not float tenders. I took a yeah. call that TCS was the best, basically, and nobody questioned me at that time. I wonder if I did that today, what will happen? Yeah, number one. Okay, you, you you get the point. Yep. And so many fantastic things have happened because of that new millennium Indian technology leadership initiative. More than hundred private sector companies and two fifty institutions work together to create um, the, some incredible things. By the way, which are today in the market. So government has a role to play uh, in 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 all this. Uh, you know, in a in a supporting way by creating a fund of funds or whatever, etc. But looking at the country's needs, I mean, I have challenges of that kind. For example, tuberculosis. You have to look right. at the country's problem. Tuberculosis. One challenge uh, I had given was it takes six to eight months for TB to be cured. I said, can you do it in two months? Mm. Right? Because you know, once the poor start taking the uh, 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 tablets, you know, their temperature become normal, appetite comes back, and they stop. That's right. Uh, disease resistant. Uh, Uh, TB uh, so, uh, sort of happens, so important for us to do it in two months, basically, and we had a breakthrough. As a matter of fact, for the first time, I mean, India is always known to copy molecules. No, sorry, we created uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, an alternative to rifampicin, basically. You know, at that time, uh, the first new uh, molecule. Unfortunately, it failed in the uh, phase two. That's a different matter altogether. Right. But we're capable of doing that. I think the sum and substance of what I'm saying is that the government has a role to play. Uh, I mean, a partner with private sector, but it has to be based on trust. T R U S T in capital letters. Right. Yeah. No knock on your door after ten years. Thank you, um, Jain Sate, also from Pune. He's a steel technologist. A class fellow from school. He is saying, "Did you have a chance to explore how these youngsters, whom you avoided over the ten years, how their thoughts went towards that innovation?" You gave the example, a, a few examples of you know personal experience, seeing a scavenger die, and so on and so forth. And if you, if that, if that thought process has been captured. so that that can be institutionalized you know into a module or something and more people can be taught to think that way so that mlm innovation with mlm can be practiced for the benefit of the country has that been crystallized no no this is exactly why we are writing the book because mm-hmm. we want these 12 people to be heroes but most importantly the way the ecosystem helped them like i gave the example of uh, uh the uh, uh you know you can see it here just one second yeah give me one minute sure uh, there it is see you can see it here yes we can yeah this is sanket by the way okay i see and uh, the way it works uh, this one as i said mm-hmm. okay. uh, you put your two fingers here for 15 right. this is your uh, sensor this is your heart 15 right. 15 seconds 15 15 15 seconds okay and in 3 minutes if you have downloaded an app called sanket it goes to you all right I see. okay it, it was six lead initially how did it become 12 lead and how has it been able to give it to 0.2 million people today because if you have not given that soft funding of 46 lakh by right. that right. you would not be there today You you get the point, right? Right. We have all these systems like CSR, the that and the other. You know, like I mentioned today, Dozi has come, and that is the need of the hour: remote monitoring with shortage right. of nurses and uh, rest of it, etc., etc. And remote monitoring becomes even more important 
in the infectious uh, diseases. And you know how many health workers have died as a result of uh, continuous contact and so on. But even with such a thing, uh, you know, finally we had to rely upon CSR, corporate social responsibility. Right. So I think we have to fix some of these weaknesses that we have in the system and heroes will emerge. Fortunately, my 12 heroes have overcome everything. Right. Uh, because what I do is that I just don't give an award, by the way. I hold oh. hands with them till the end. Like with uh, I see. Yeah, Dozi, even today, I can tell you how many, what he's doing. Just now, uh, yesterday, he told me why he's giving him 1.5 crore for bets. A Chinese company is giving him 1.5 crore. Right. Don't we be supporting? I, what are we talking about? So the answer to your question is that, yes, it can be institutionalized by taking each of the, the, uh, these stories and how all those 10 tenets that I talked about, you know, mm -hmm. against each, there are big principles. That's why I want to bring it out as a book so that this can be replicated all around. I think a, a personal follow-on question is, uh, have you thought of how to make a hundred clones of uh, Ram Mashelkar <laughs> so that the country can benefit more, you know? I mean, I mean <laughs> just your uh, commitment to the country and to the poor and the economy and the bringing it all together in a deliverable form is also rare, whether it is a Leather Technology Institute and Dr. Naidama or Vikram Sarabhai envisaging the okay. science and its development in the country or Abdul Kalam in Missile. I mean, it's not every day this happens, right? There yeah. are very well-educated people, but there is something more than education that drives this. Am I right? You are right, as a matter of fact. In fact, I mentioned to you that my mother was illiterate, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But she was, uh, to be fair to her, she was semi-literate. She could write, by the way. Right. Not very good, but she could write. I am what I am because of her, not because she gave me birth. Right. Okay. But she gave me values. For example, I'll just tell you how the Anjani Mashankar Inclusive Innovation Award came. And the reason I'm mentioning this is that it answers your broader question. How do you develop Mashankars? Right. She was responsible. In what way? What uh, used to happen was that, I, see, I was in National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. Then I became DJ of CSR. Okay, but my family did not move with me mm -hmm. uh, initially because my son had to, you know, 11th standard and the rest of it, you know, I'll not get right. into details. So she stayed there. So what used to happen was that every uh, Friday evening, I will come to Pune. I will be in the lab. In fact, I will drive straight from the airport to the lab, by the way. I'll I see. go home uh, sort of late. And then Saturday, Sunday, I'll be in the lab. Sunday evening, I'll go back. And I did that for 11 and a half years. Okay. And I remember each time I came, uh, whatever change I had with me, 100 rupees, 200, 500 cents, I'll give it to my mother before going. I never asked her what she did with it. When she passed away on 17 November uh, 2006, and by the way, 17 November is the day we give these awards. Basically. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 she passed away. Then my daughter Shruti was actually uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, organizing her saris, you know, and so on. And she suddenly found all that money there. And she had left a cheat there that um, you are doing science, do something for the poor. Mm. Okay. And then, of course, I had some major awards at that time. I put all that money together and created a foundation. But it was who she who actually oh, yeah. triggered the. So I think the parents, uh, the society, has a big role to play. Actually, right. Shilkar is not what Shilkar is because he was a little more clever than others. You start developing empathy based on the experiences that you have, the values that you get. You know, you talked about the Haldi pattern, turmeric pattern. You cannot believe it. She is responsible for it. You know, in what way? Uh huh. Because the way it happened, it's interesting. Uh, I was director of uh, uh, NCL and we had a bungalow and I was sitting there uh, with my wife and my, with my mother and suddenly a bird came and fell. Okay. And his wing was broken. My mother came down and brought haldi paste and applied. Oh. The, 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 the bird died after a couple of hours. And I remember all of us cried and he was buried and I remember Amu, my son, cried the most. 
Then when I was in Delhi, I suddenly saw uh, this uh, N. Suresh saying that this patent has been applied for turmeric patent, wound dealing. I said, come on, my mother knew it, my mother's mother knew it. Well, mm -hmm. What is it? And then I declared it in, in the evening. But before that, there is an interesting story because what happened was that when she applied haldi, I asked her while uh, having a dinner, uh, I said, uh, how did you think that what works on a man or a woman uh, or a human will work on a bird? She said, look, to me, all human, human I mean, all living things are the same. You know, look, look at the enlightened view of that illiterate lady. That actually had touched my heart. And that is why I fought that. And the rest is history. Today, tradition, knowledge, digital library came out of that. Right. Uh, changes, etc. So I give enormous importance to our the, the sort of family upbringing and the values and so on and so forth. Uh, we talk about Jnana Savardhan, Buddhi Savardhan, but most important is Mulya Savardhan. Right. Yes. That has to be the part of education. And once you have that, you can why create machine super machine <laughs> I think uh, time and again, we come back to this core values of life and, you know, upbringing. And Dr. Abdul Kalam says the most important people, the mother and the primary school teacher. I think there is more truth to that than any time, you know. Yeah. Can I, can I uh, yes. uh, uh, do something that I uh, could not uh, have done earlier? And uh, now uh, this uh, makes me do that because uh, what Professor Narsiva is doing is something fantastic about bringing up teachers. Okay, so just like I talked about my mother, let me talk about my teacher for just three, four minutes. Yes. So what happened was uh, that uh, I passed, uh, by the way, I went to a municipal school, mm -hmm. studied in Marathi. Okay, and it did not make any difference. I want to state that. All right. Right. Then I was in a primary school, seventh standard. I remember I got some 88% mark or something like that. And then I had to go to a secondary school. Mm -hmm. For that, my mother required 21 rupees, all fees put together, etc., etc. Right. And she took 21 days to gather them. And finally, there was a lady, uh, uh, you know, who was a housemaid at Chopati, working with the Gujarati family. That was her saving. She gave it. And that's why I got admission. But by that time, all the admissions in top schools were closed. And I see. It was a poor school, Union High School, where I got in. But I'm so glad I went there because that poor school had rich teachers. Mm -hmm. One of them was Principal Bhave. And since you are talking about science teaching, and uh, 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 Professor Naswar rightly said that you, you must do experiments, etc. There is one experiment that he did, Professor Naswar, which changed my life. And I will tell you what that was. Because he was a great believer in not chalk and talk, but see and learn, experience and learn. Right. For example, soap making. You know, all of us can write all the equations and get 10 out of 10. But not even 1% of us have seen a soap factory. When we were that young, he would take us by tram and he showed us Hindu Sun River factory at Sibi how to make soap. Mm. He paid for my 5 paisa tram ticket, by the way. He was poor, I was poor, but he was probably less poor. That, that was the way. So one day, right. we did an experiment, which is... Uh, uh, something I want to uh, uh, narrate. And that experiment was uh, like this. He took a convex lens in his hand and he wanted to show how to find the focal length of a convex lens. He had a piece of paper and he moved uh, that up and down and then there was a sharp focus and a sharp bright point. And then he said, Mashilka, this is the, uh, this is the uh, focal length. And he held it for some time and the paper burnt. When the paper burnt, he turned to me for some reason. He said, like this, if you focus all your energies, you can achieve anything in the world. And that did two things. One, it was inspiring. Oh, science is so fantastic, I'll become a scientist. That was the moment when I decided to go for science. Mm. As I grew older, I saw more uh, lessons in it. What does a convex lens do? Sun's rays are parallel. Okay. And what is the property of parallel lines? They never meet. Right? Correct. What convex lines do? It makes brings them together. Yeah. Like the country is divided. Race, religion, language, desire, etc. What does a good leader do? Bring them together. 
Unfortunately, concave lens leadership does exactly the opposite. It gives them sort of convergence. So therefore, that convex lens leadership, when I became the director of National Chemical Laboratory, we had inorganic chemistry division, organic chemistry division, polymer chemistry division, biochemistry division, 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 division. I said, no, one NCA. I changed my funding pattern with that NCA. When I became the director general of CSR, 40 labs, you know, yes. labs will be talking to each other. I said nothing to him. Team CSR, one CSR, you know. And believe me, when I left, there were one project where 19 labs were actually working together. And then I took it to a higher scale when um, that new millennium Indian technology leadership, like I said, 100 private sector companies, 250 institutions. And then I became president of Global Research Alliance. Mm -hmm. India, CSR, Australia, CSR, South Africa, Pranapur Gazette of Germany, VTT Finland, GTI Denmark, TNO Netherlands, etc. I brought them all together, focusing on creating a global good through global funding, basically. You know? So that one lesson that I learned, basically, from one teacher while he demonstrated that experiment, changed my life. That's uh, what I wanted to uh, sort of mention in support of what and I, uh, 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 Professor Nasiba, you are doing something that is extremely important because the young schools are going to create the future of India and the teachers are going to create their future, that of the students. No, uh, Dr. Mashalka, let me just interrupt here. We went to a school, a nearby village school, where uh, the Chitruga district, and we found to our amazement that, you know, some of the eight standard students didn't know how, what 10 divided by 10.5 is. Many of the teachers didn't know this. Mm. So to teach them and, you know, to solve problems is what uh, the mathematics portion of our teaching is. It's only solving problems and solving day-to-day -day problems mathematically. So that is how we are imbibing uh, this uh, knowledge there. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is absolutely fantastic. This is music to my ears. I, I, I really applaud you. I will send you some information of what we are doing. No, no, no. Please, please do that. Please do that. I think the major challenge is going to be, by the way, how do we build the teachers of the future? Yes, that, exactly. That's yeah. the challenge. That's and and uh, very frankly, I'm very worried about it because the young kids are ahead of uh, the teachers today. I can yeah. say, <laughs> no, just, uh, just let me take two minutes to uh, yeah. talk about the challenge. And uh, President Nasima would be interested in this. Just uh, three, four weeks ago, uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, Gujar, Uday Gujar, brought his grandson to me. You know what is the age of that grandson? Eight years. And he brought him to me because he said, I don't know what to do with him. I said, why? He said, you talk to me and find out. Can you believe me? His grandson, uh -huh. about coronavirus, about mutation, about wow. spike protein, he knew. Wow. All right. How does the mutation take place? He knew. And uh, then I kept on probing him further. You know, then since he talked about DNA and RNA, I had an old photograph with me. I was in CCMB, by the way. And uh, uh, as you know, Watson Creek, etc., had got that Nobel Prize. Yeah. So Watson had visited. So I pulled out that photograph and showed it to him. I said, who is this? And then... Uh, he could not recognize because Watson was old. Then I told him about Watson. Then he said, yeah, he named the Nobel laureates. And he also told me the individual who had done the X-ray diffraction, basically, who did not share the, uh, the sort of prize, you know, how she should have shared. Oh. Can you just imagine an eight-year-old? <laughs> I know that his teachers would know that. So yeah. on the other day, I was addressing some 500 teachers and I told them, this is your new uh, the challenge. Professor Narsiwa, do you agree this is going to... And then, by the way, I asked his uh, father. I said, you're not a scientist. His grandfather is not a scientist. How come? He said, no, he loves science. And all that I did was to give him the freedom to use internet in the way that he wants. And this is all self-learning. Right. Exactly. And of course, yeah. I, corrected him. I corrected him by saying that today he's using his brain as a storage. He has to use it as a processor. And mm. that's why he require a teacher. That also I told you. But the right. point is, Guru, I mean, Google is their guru today. Right. As information is concerned. So if the people just uh, the, tell them about what uh, uh, they already know in the class, 
I think that is going to be, to me, I'm giving you this eight-year-old example. Right. 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 Do you Thank you. Uh, there are uh, some more questions. Yes, sir. You wanted to say something? No, no. Professor Narsiva, I want to ask you yeah. about what I said just now. Yes. No, I agree with you. I think, you know, uh, all of us, you know, and, uh, have to completely change dealing with students now. And especially, I, I find very, very bright students in the rural uh, areas. So yeah. enthusiastic. They know so much and they're so curious to know. And it's a pity that the teachers are unable to, uh, you know, uh, take their enthusiasm and uh, motivate them. And I think teaching the teachers itself is now becoming a big challenge. And I think that's what I think is necessary. And I think many teachers doing experiments for the first time, they don't want to go back uh, to the school. They want to spend uh, more, more uh, days in our campus to learn more and more. So I think this is a very important exercise. And we hope that, you know, it will make a big difference in the next few years, teaching teachers. The whole philosophy is that one teacher teaches 100 students. So we amplify by teaching teachers. That's the whole philosophy. There. Yeah, I agree. We have uh, many more questions, but I think uh, we have uh, had considerable time. Thank you for taking all this. Uh, several questions, Dr. Mashelkar. I'm sure you're used to... Uh, people asking you more and more in your meetings. In fact, but, I judge how good my talk was on the basis of the number of questions and the quality of questions. Exactly, yeah. So I, I would do something which I always do because I know uh, it evokes a lot of uh, curiosity and uh, sometimes uh, you know people really want. So I would say that uh, uh, we'll have to close now, I understand. But uh, my uh, email ID is a very simple one, ram at mashelkar.com. Ram yes. at mashelkar.com. Uh, so please feel free to send uh, uh, your questions and I will be absolutely delighted to answer each one of them. I will uh, share your email address with your permission with our members so that they can uh, reach out to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. And before we... Um, propose a formal vote of thanks. Uh, Murali, would you like to say a few words about your uncle, about today's talk? You can unmute yourself and say some, unmute yourself. No, I think uh, Mr. Obama has given a very nice introduction of uh, Dr. Harrison Prasad, and uh, that's, uh, that's quite enough. But I would take this opportunity to thank Foswell, really, and all the your team, Vakresar Garu and you. I mean, you're doing this 150 months consecutively without a break. Uh, even in the pandemic, I think even if there's a world war, you're going to do it. <laughs> I mean, it's fantastic. And the array of speakers that you're getting are like superstars. You know, we are so fortunate. I know enough for uh, Dr. Arisan Prasad Singh, we've had nine. All are just like bullets, you know, and it's a, not an easy job. And I must congratulate you, Subara and Venkat Sravagar for this wonderful job. And it's really an honor to, today to have a guest uh, of the eminence of uh, Dr. Mashelka. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your wonderful uh, message. Thank you. Thank you. May I now call upon our secretary, Sri Subhas Chandra Bose, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Bose Garu. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. President of Hospital Hyderabad, Sri Venkateswara Garu, distinguished speaker, Padma Bhushan, Dr. R. A. Mashelkar, family and friends of Dr. Murlapudi Harishchandra Prasad Garu, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining this 151st monthly meeting on June. We thank the family members of Dr. Murlapudi Harishchandra Prasad Garu for establishing an annual endowment lecture in his name in July. We must particularly thank them for making a generous additional donation of rupees 250,000 towards this endowment in the context of the diminishing interest rates on bank FDs. We also thank Dr. Pariplavi Enigarla for the annual logistic sponsorship for the month of July every year. In a world that has come to accept 
thoughtless wastage of resources as a way of life in which sustainability is forgotten and most economic activity is focused on and targeted for the wealthy today's talk came as a breath of fresh air it was an eye opener for many of us as to how policies approaches and initiatives based on the philosophy of more with less for more can get us closer to equity and fairness to all the citizens of the world dr arya mashelkar's lucid and comprehensive presentation on gandhian engineering more with less for more gave us an insight into how much more can and needs to be done not only in our cities but more so in our villages thank you dr mashal karji for answering our many questions and spending the evening with us thank you miss harshita kanamuri for rendering the prayer we wish to thank miss uma mahesh rao polavarapu for sharing some snippets of the illustrious and inspiring life of dr mullapudi harishchandra prasad garu thank you dr narsimha rao desiraju for introducing our distinguished speaker which was very apt as you also come from the same scientific community we laud the good work we are doing as the director of the new campus of indian institute of science at chellakere in chitradurga district karnataka the centers latent development centers mission of training high school and junior college teachers in maths and science can make a huge impact on the quality of education imparted in our government schools in the rural areas we thank mr anand halbe for proposing the name of dr r j mashelkar as the speaker for today's meeting we are very happy that the family members of dr mullapudi harishchandra prasad garu could be a part of today's meeting thank you for joining us this evening we propose to continue with the zoom meetings for now till we get over the anticipated third wave if you have not already done so please get vaccinated as early as possible and continue to follow all precautions even after the vaccination our forthcoming meetings are as follows saturday 21st august 21 at 6:15 pm mr anand halve former senior it professional will speak on a peek into enchanting east africa uh, for the month of september on saturday 18th september professor ram mohan rao mendu dean emeritus of indian school of business and former director indian institute of management bangalore will speak on management institutes international recognition and societal impact case study of isb and iimb on the 16th of october 2021 miss arati halbe alumnus of the london school of economics passionate researcher on the culture of nomads in india will speak on pastoralism once again it was nice for all of us to have got together for this 151st monthly meeting good night and ladies and gentlemen till we meet again on the third saturday of august for our 152nd monthly meeting thank you all thank you all for joining us we had about uh, 60 at the peak on zoom and about 10 were watching on youtube when i last checked so that's a total of 70 and we will circulate the recording as usual so more can benefit i'm sure dr mashelkar you won't mind a uh, uh, circulating this video would you not at all not yeah. at all it will reach more people usually we have a good viewership thank you all thank you dr mashelkar for thank joining you. us thank you thank Bye-bye. you thank you so very much sir thank, thank you, you.